bot lane duo inax and camellius nautilus callista they are going all out to try and beat down in the early game now my question is what do vitality b have to answer they may look toward a misfortune here on three as that answer to say okay well we can again kind of cheat the early game and potentially just win anyway and this set coming through they need to ban senna they need to ban senna right now uh because set center is a bot lane pairing that can go down and can potentially try and fight uh but diplex alternatively just playing this in the mid lane it seems like a very strange blind pick this kind of i feel like if they put it in the mid lane it is a flex i believe like you've just pointed out rude dude that harkens back to that previous meta style we saw ages and ages ago where you saw this set it would get like uh, a lot of prior in the mid lane and you'd use it to play with the jungle in the 2v2 with that Lilia as well, having so much tempo in comparison to the Viego, I like that that might be the way, the direction they're going in. But we'll have to see how it unfolds in the second ban phase. Yeah, I'm very confused because leaving Lilia as your solo AP source isn't something that you tend to do. Um, and, and I think that, you know, obviously this is harking to a potential flex pick of letting Jack Troll play the set, potentially just as a support um, as well. There is that world where this is going to be trying to, you know, t tussle in a 2v2 uh, and I think that it probably, I, I'm almost certain, in fact, that this is just going to be set support at this point. Doesn't seem to fit in the mid lane really at all so early to showcase. It's not like a be all and end all mid laner that you tend to see on three before it gets banned away. So uh, I've almost convinced myself at this point that, that that's going to be the case. But we'll have to see what game ward elect to for this final ban. We still know that they have a hyper carry in the bot lane to pick up. You know, that AD carry style needs to be fulfilled. Uh, and we'll see what game would go to for their solo laners. I'm glad they got rid of the center. That that, that kind of needed to be taken away. Vitality B now, they kind of have to show their hand a little bit. Or they can go for their ADC and kind of keep that set pick flex as a, a you know, the answer till five. Yeah, I think you pick AD carry here and you allow the mysteries to continue into your final pick. Ezreal, not exactly the most obvious. I feel like with picking this Ezreal, you're almost saying that the set is going mid lane in a way. It is going to be a support counter pick five. I'm I'm still uncertain. I, I'm still waiting to be seen. I think that the the Callista right is obviously as an answer to the Ezreal preliminarily. It was saying, okay, you know, you pick your Ezreal, you play to your top side, and see what happens. I think that this has been a style that Game Ward adopted versus Carmine Corp, and they really punished Carmine Corp for it because they knew they were just going to put Ezreal bot lane and see what happened on the top side of the map. They were going to throw down, and it was Game Ward that won through the bot lane Olaf's in that bad, game. Yeah. Say it again, sorry? I think Olaf's not bad here. I feel like Olaf sort of run through the team. They do go for the Swain. I think Swain's a champion. We've spoken about it being like quite utilized into shorter range compositions. It's a bit better. So it's a bit strange to me with a lot of the poke that's being offered. Jigenda's going to play at a distance as well. I'll be interesting to see whether it works out here. The first Swain we saw as well opted in for that Everfrost as well, which I don't think is the best build either. So I believe, I mean, it's pretty obvious that's going in the top line. It'd be good to see. Melonic, I believe, is our second or our third Swain that we're seeing this split. So hopefully he can put yeah, on a better showing because I think the previous swains that we've seen have all lost. Uh, Saken won. It was the game that had no business winning. Oh, Saken um, did win, but it was the game, yeah, like you're saying, he shouldn't have won. Yeah, they they, they found that miracle late game team fight and they yeah. somehow won the game up against uh, up against it. They, they did get that win. Further owing to the fact that uh, we spoke about like Swain really likes his short range. Vega, with that cage, going to be able to stop him from really you know getting up in your face, which is really what this champion wants to do. I think uh, I'm a fan of uh, some of what Vitality B's done. I'm not a massive fan of the Ezreal pick. I think the Ezreal pick is, I don't know. It's not exactly, I don't think, I don't think the AD carry pool has been pinched enough to the point where I would suggest that it's the optimal pick here. I think picking into Callista is somewhat dubious in the sense that Callista traditionally seen as a counter to that pick. Um, but we're going to have to see whether tradition is bucked here. We are going to be throwing a two game. Don't go anywhere. The game's about to start. Onto the rift now for our fourth game of the day. Another highly contested spectacle that will be unfolding. Game War 3 and 1 coming through with some impressive victories. Vitality B, actually, interesting enough, Rude Dude, the lowest average game time outside of the bottom two teams. Don't want to lean into statistics too much. Because sometimes they can tell lies, but I think that speaks to a 
dominant first four games of the split. They've been a team that very much does come forward and kind of demolish you. A lot of that comes from Shigenda as well. Now, I want to touch a little bit briefly here on this bot lane pairing because you talked about you liking some things that Vitality B have done. I, I am also not liking so much about this set pick. I think that set can work as an answer to Callista, but I think that pairing it with this Ezreal is, is the dichotomy of bot lane duos where set probably pairs very nicely with the likes of a Samira this game, for example. But an Ezreal just feels the complete opposite, if you will. It is not a good pairing in the bot lane, and I'm still scared about how it's going to play out. I think the set is a very good mitigating factor up against the Callista. But if it's enough uh, when it's paired with something quite so different as an Ezreal, we need to wait and see. Yeah, it'd be very interesting to see how that quite unfolds. I think the usefulness. Oh, we might be seeing a bit of a late invade here. 128. We're going to see four members marching forward from from game ward into this blue side. They're going to be slightly late to it, but they are going to get it. And this means a split map for Vitality B. This is exactly what... I really like this from game ward. This is exactly what they want. Isolating this matchup and making it so that now Vitality B have to make a choice here. Skeens is going to be coming to contest his other side. Other camps here. He's going to get spotted out, though, by that ward. He's going to go straight to the Gromp, though. He'll be spotted out eventually. And, I mean, all, all of a sudden, right? Vitality B are just sprinting around the map like headless chickens trying to close down Akabane. This should just be a three camp secured. Early on, Checo should be able to establish priority in the mid lane and make sure that he can help defend his blue buff if Akabane is, uh, you know, in, in any danger of losing it. And now is when we really get to see the priority of this Callista Nautilus. Granted, level two goes over the set Ezreal, which gives them, you know, this little bit of time to try and poke, to try and bully. But level 2 is about to come through for Game Warden. When this wave resets, when it's neutralized, I imagine there's going to be a lot of fighting. Yeah, I think this is a, this is big, though. I mean, we touched on it again. Game Warden managing to get this early start. There's going to be a hook onto set here. A lot of return damage comes out from the W. Camillus has that shield available. But big in terms of how the jungle matchup is going, you speak about how Lilia kind of needs to leverage that tempo advantage in the early game from the clear speed. Camillus looks up again. Mines onto Jesper, no. though. Jesper's going to have to burn summoners here. Has to E out. This is a heal as well. Ignite comes down from Camellius, and it's a good trade for the game ward bot lane. And you can see that Inax is anticipating the arcane shift with his initial pierce. Uh, but but it doesn't come through. Jessica a little bit late on that and actually gets himself out to safety through a different route back toward the turret. As opposed to the one more uh, or that would have been more expected to be further away. Skeen's able to quickly steal away that crab. Does get stunned for his pleasure, but... The, the bot side crab uh, probably going to be of, of sacrifice. We potentially see Inax and Camellius go up there and try and take it, but they're still he very heavily tussling down on this bot side. And actually, now that this wave is in the face of Vitality B's turret, this is actually very good for Vitality B because Camellius can never really engage at this position with a wave state, and Jesper is still free to throw poke at Inax. Completely. And um, again. The way the jungle is played out means that they're really allowed to just do whatever they want here in this bot. They get these waves in pretty much for free. I think an important thing to note is that somehow, you wouldn't expect this to quite be the case, it might be owing somewhat to the fact that Vitality B's bot lane were able to get that early push in and get that first wave in. But from that point onwards, you would imagine that Callista and Nort would have the CS advantage, but it's not the case. Actually, Jessica are up around two waves. So in, so in some ways, actually, Game Ward's one like, way of like, opening this game Kind of going remiss somewhat, but it is only four minutes. Into the game. But it's important. These these trends are important to point out, and, and that's just because we're expecting Callista Nautilus to be so oppressive in the early stages. And whilst I, you know, had my concerns, and I believe you know you did as well about this Ezreal set bot lane, for the most part, they've been quashed. They've been able to prevent any sort of early game damage, any game issues thus far. They burned heal on Jeskla, but. That's about it, and if that's the price for stopping a Callista Nautilus early game dominance, I think that's something that you're very happy to go for. You know, you've gone back to base as Jester, you've picked up Sheen plus a tier, you're set up for the laning phase now, where Inax's first base wasn't even able to complete tier 2 boots, which is the, the staple of a Callista early game. And now continuing through the remainder of this laning phase, they should be fairly okay, this Vitality B bot lane. The question I'm becomes rather now, confused. what can... I'm rather confused how this can happen, because... The lane didn't exactly get blown open in a 
potentially detrimental way. They obviously did get the first wave in, but from that point onwards, they win the early skirmish. They burn the heal from Jeskler. I've never, I've not seen the wave be in a like particularly sanctimonious position for Game Warder. Might just have come down to quite a misplay though. They have managed to build a lot of that lead back now. Before Game Ward, I, I think that their game plan has largely been tripod. Melonic hits a good route, but Sagenda very fast fingers on the oranges. Akabane shows his face with it enough time to let Sagenda get out to safety. The by and large of this entire composition was Camellius dying. Friend. Not gonna do enough damage though. on the Callista though in. With Skeen showing his face bot lane, just again preventing this Callista Nautilus. The rest of the game plan for Vitality B, the top side of the map scale up, we let Sagenda farm, we let this GP be a powerful force, and like we said, we were waiting for them to, to or we were waiting for Vitality B to see what their answer to this Callista was going to be. And it so far has just been mitigate, 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 prevent them from getting ahead, prevent them from ever being a snowball, and they've done a very good job at that. They are so far currently just absolutely dominating this bot lane. Even though it's like a one wave CS lead up against a Callista Nautilus, that feels so much better. It's like the old days of Jace where if you're going even, you're ahead. Yeah, absolutely. But Skeen's going to find the Raptor Cam being taken away there. The cage wasn't able to be found onto Akabani. But ball. Predator here. Swain has first move. Akabani buying time here. But Skeen's one more auto will do it. That is going to be it. He gets. Drawn in here, Shekalad's gonna find it with one more tick of Ignite. It's a one for one in the end. Kill on kill four skins. Camellius might have bitten off a little bit more than he can chew. Never mind, counter engage comes down. Deerplex, what can you do with a cage here? The play does get stifled by that cage. And it zones off enough of game ward. Vitality B go away with a one for one. Uh, kill onto the jungler versus a kill onto the mid laner for game ward and check lad on the re We saw him have a phenomenal performance continually finding those flying kind of goals. getting kills onto check lad is a way for game ward to win We talked about their bot lane needing to be that carry threat through the early game But Checo can step up in the late game and find those picks find those angles to set up for success They have both just walked over a control ward in that river. So there is no play to be had this is that setup of the bot side where Akabane steals away the big raptor but forces his flash out to safety and with Predator going, Diplex can close this gap very easily. Wants to hit this Q so that the Primordial Burst will be an execute. Doesn't quite have enough damage. And then he's getting zoned out by Checo down on this bot side and you know, wisely Checo recognizes, okay, I don't have the damage to finish this off. We'll come back over, we'll take down Skeens, we'll take the one for one. But an early game scuffle that, that doesn't really go either way necessarily. Uh, certainly still got a lot of early game questions that need to answer around this bot side. I think an important thing to draw attention to is in regards to who your star men are. Shigenda for Vitality B is consistently as actually here. UE from Lilia does go wide there. Sleep was available. Could have been a bit of danger for Checker Lad. Did have the cleanse though and the flash. Probably would have had to burn them. We speak about your star men in terms of these games. Shigenda has been your man in the top lane carrying Vitality B to victory time and time again. On the flip side of that, Sheko Lad coming up huge in a lot of these games. We spoke about it, you touched upon it slightly there, finding these flanks. If he can get an individual performance off, he's the kind of man that can take down a lot of these teams single-handedly. You saw him do it against Carmine Corp on that Zoe, I believe. And him getting off without a hitch is very important for this team. Quick look at this top lane. I mean, Sagenda... He's getting bullied by these barrels, honestly. Melonic has got the timing down, and it's not just timing on GP barrels, it's also timing on your own champion's auto attacks. As really is looking aggressively. He's looking rather aggressively here. He's eyeing around Jack Troll. Jack finds the W. Camellius manages to edge out to the side there. Render's going to come down in a few seconds, means that Jack Troll goes low. Both junglers are nowhere near in the vicinity, so it's just going to be some individual pressure. Unlikely that we see the dive come out. Camellius goes quite low from that Ezreal ult. Stifles any attempts of the hand. So just continue your trading down on this bot side, but again, to, to reiterate, the fact that this Callista Nautilus lane isn't winning is very detrimental to game mode. They would like to have a strong advantage being picked up, and no plates is you know, kind of a signifier that this lane has gone even at best. Inax has a slight level lead. They can potentially leverage that to move around the map, and they're using it right now to secure this Herald, but it's a Herald that Vitality B had really no interest in trying to secure. Sagenda needs to be a little careful on his top side. He is slightly far forward, but 
should be able to, you know, use GP barrels to, to get out to safety if, of course, there's any pressure really being thrown down. It's a good move by Game Ward, setting up for Akabani to maybe take some plates with that Herald and move around. Obviously, get Inax back up and back in the lead. Yeah, Inax. I mean, we've seen the Callista quite a few times. I think Inax has played it once before, I believe. I know Smiley's played it twice. Champion we see more of, I think, traditionally. It's interesting to me they ban out the Renata. And then Theo Wonder, it's a pairing that we see a lot of. One of the problems is, obviously, Renata has a range support, so you do get that weird interaction there. Skeens has found his way in the bot lane here. If they can bait Inax in slightly, then they will be able to find him. Nothing's come from it just yet. Swell Seed is about all that's used. Ash forward on to Jeskler here, though, but a lot of damage coming out. W is used by Jack Troll. Rend is needed to be found here. Inax comes in. Stun onto, uh, onto Skeens here, though, as well. Rend. Reset comes through, but isn't able to be found. Here comes Shekolad. Pull the trigger almost. Jessa doesn't have that E quite yet. Here comes Shekolad in, out. Nice Q. Two kills for Game Ward. I like that. They pull the trigger early and they go for just the one quick kill. They don't want to commit onto a dive onto Jessica. There was too much time being wasted for having to get all these minions under the turret. So they go in, they get out, they get the two kills very nicely and they open up the map on this bot side. This is a 2v3 by Game Ward right now. Camellius flashes forward, gets the buffer on the Ezreal he granted, but that ulti knocks up all three members. Jack Troll falls here to the auto flash rend coming through and then with this drowsy really nice timing on the sleep means that he spends no time stunned or rooted and you can see Checo lad really well played on the aria as well ult one q doesn't land but he repositions it with q, with his second ulti and then manages to take skins down with the true damage beautiful play and a nice execute on the bot side for game ward important to note is although these trends are going in the direction of game ward still rather dead even in the in the gold Department. A lot of that owing to slight CS deficit in the bot lane. Obviously, that kill acquiesces that somewhat, but gold leading the top side as well. The gangplank passive obviously aiding with that as well. Gold generation. He's up around 700 or so. And it's that ticking time bomb, essentially, right? Of a GP in the late game. At some point, Sagenda will be able to, to dish out immeasurable damage, right? We're talking, you know, multiple... We're talking like 900 damage barrels over multiple members of a team. That's something that is just very difficult to replicate for anybody on Game Ward. So the, the time bomb is there. It's whether or not Game Ward can either alleviate some of Sagenda's priority through this early game and through the mid game now into uh, setting themselves up for their own leads and whether those own leads can do enough. Absolutely. Dragon's going to be spawning in. Sagenda takes quite a lot of damage. Anthony Leandri's doing quite a lot. He's going to have that W. And Melonic's really good at the timing. He's going to look straight up for a dive here. Ultimate comes down. That's going to be all she wrote on that. And Melonic, well, we saw him We saw him the last time we cut away to him there. He was able to kind of dodge out these barrels quite efficiently with the aura attacks. And he's really punished again there for the first time this, we've seen this split. He's going low. And more can they find their way out here. Counter Engage comes off the Jack Troll. Akabane look for his reset here. W comes out. He ultimates away. Camellius is going to get taken out here. Akabane takes it. Here comes Set onto Skeen. Skeens has ultimate. Has flash oh, rather. He goes into stasis. The blast cone is primed as well. Can he find his way out of here? Sleep comes down. He flashes over the wall as well. It looked like they'd be able to take him out there, but they don't manage to. Vitality B don't walk away with more than one death. They lose the Drake as well. Yeah, I mean, that's still a big win for Game Ward, regardless of the fact that Skeens gets to walk away. They still lose a solo kill in the top lane. They lose the Drake. They lose pretty much everything down on the bot side. And Game Ward. They're starting that snowball. It took them a couple minutes to get it fully fledged and rolling down the hill, but right now it is on its way. 1k gold lead is all that separates the two teams right now, but it is gold in the right places. We've got two kills on Inax, we've got two kills on Chekolad. Melonic finds his own solo kill up in that top side. That is all three carries generating resources, getting themselves advantages, and potentially moving through this game with a certain amount of ease. Yeah, absolutely and completely how important it was and we look in the mid lane here flash away Ooh. from the Q means the primordial burst not able to do quite enough damage to Shekela to take him over the threshold there but Diplos is definitely applying the pressure in this mid lane did force the flash back out from Diplex as well that charm over the wall was just enough there to uh, secure the flash back uh, so trade of flashes trade of ultis as well Nothing too much garnered by either mid laner other than those cooldowns. And in this case, I think that favors Game Ward because 
Chekolad, obviously, is the Ori much more slippery, much more maneuverable than a Veigar. Completely. There's two dragons building up now. We're moving towards an Ocean Soul. Talk to me about how this Ocean Soul will enable Game War, especially with Mr. Swain in the top. Though. Yeah, I mean, you hit the nail on the head right there. The sustainability across this comp is actually very scary, right? With Conqueror on Akabane. Chekolad gets heals every time he resets. Inax as well with the Immortal Shield bow. They have a lot of innate sustain to their composition and Ocean Soul is only going to aid, only going to facilitate that. The issue that they're going to run up against is a lot of Vitality Beast damage is very burst centric. Vigar, GP, they're going to do very quick instances of damage and if it's enough to 100 to 0 you, the Ocean Soul will be very negligible for Game Ward. So Keep your eye on Diplex, keep your eye on Sagenda to see how quickly their burst damage can come through. Right now, it's not too much of a concern, and until very late stages, GP doesn't actually truly one-shot until that point. Same for Vigar. With GP so as well, a, it's about... My point is, oh, sorry. Then, th there's a world where Ocean Soul comes through before those one-shots come through, and it does have an impact. Yeah, 100% here, as you do see, Camellius is... Sorry, not Camellius is, but the Spectral... Uh, what do you call that? The Callista W, I forget what it's called. Like, it's us on you. I don't know that one either. Yeah, I don't know that one. But anyway, it almost spots them out there. Sentinel. It's going to alert them. Sentinel, right. that's the one. The Sentinel does out. spot them out here. He does come on to Camellius. They can't quite find the die because the wave is not here. Inaxis has a freedom. They go aggressive here. Jack Troll ults away. Shekalad. Sheck he kind of engaged here. Now W means that he has a little bit of stopping power here. Teleport is coming around the side here from Melonic. Pulled out here by the Fates. Cool counter engage is going to come now onto Jeskler. Camellius finds it over the wall now. W comes down. Jeskler has to eat over the wall here. Melonic is coming up big. He flashes over the wall now. Jeskler's gone low from the Landry's. Keens is trying to find his way out here, but the Ren does it. Melonic is in the cage now. Here comes Akabane. He needs a reset here. He tries to get onto Diplex. Diplex goes low. Ultimate comes out. People try and find Jeskler here. Jeskler has the to safety. Another decisive victory for Game Ward in this fight here. Two kills go over to them. It does come at the cost of TP from Melonic. First turret of the game goes to Sagenda, who, you know, off the back of that fairly awkward early death that he found in the one versus one, is now able to find himself that first turret, get back some of that gold. It's about 410 for first brick in total. Traded back on the bot side, one turret goes down, but obviously the first brick bonus is certainly very useful. As Game Ward find that two for nothing on the bot side of the map. It doesn't generate them anything, it is just those couple of kills and then the turret that falls afterwards. You have that Ocean Dragon spawning in 35 seconds time. Expect to see Sagenda go back to base, spend that gold that he garnered, and then head down to the bot side. Try and help out his team to stop the dragon stacking. You don't want to be giving over three dragons for free if you can help it. Yeah, completely. 20 seconds on that spawn time. And now it does seem to be the case that Game War would have position around that. The important to note is that we spoke about how much terrain control this Vega pick would be Ranting, Jack Troll tries to find engage onto Melonic. Melonic does have the ultimate, bursts it almost immediately. Return, grab, does not land onto Skeens. They're able to skirt away from this. It's an important cooldown that has been burned before this dragon. Yeah, that big team fight cooldown means Melonic is going to be a lot more hard pressed. To have a lot of agency in this team fight, but Vitality B, they're not here. They're not setting up for it. They want top camps instead. They're facilitating Sagenda to be a late game carry, giving him gold, giving him resources in exchange for Drake number three. Number three is going to go the way of Game Ward. You see Akane in the background taking that. Let's come at the cost of that tier two, like you said, which will accelerate Shigenda a bit further forward. But look at the gold lead. I'd imagine that that's a bit tighter than the last time we saw that between the two top laners. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to see Shigenda ahead now, honestly. Um, <laughs> he's got two turrets in his favor, plus CS plus GP passive. Ooh, engaged on Takabane here. He's been caught. Has to walk him out. Ignite is ticking. In response from Camellius, it's a flash forward. Sleep comes out from Skeens, but he's been flashed on immediately by Camellius. He's gone a bit too low. Wow. He's gone a bit too far forward. Look at Shekolad here. He finds the Everfrost. He finds the charm. And Inax gets another kill, and it's a false fire. One Vitality B as two of their members go down. So will the mid lane turret. Flank angle was beautiful there from Cheko and Camellius. They are able to come over, save their jungle. Akabani looked like he was being fed to the wolves, but fortunately, he had the pack with him, and they were able to support. They got themselves that third dragon. They're not going to default toward the Baron. They're instead just securing gold after gold, turret after turret, and Shen Dender. Shenda's door here, going to be getting stunned up here. They wait for the W to be able to cleanse it. That was Shigenda, but unstoppable for Inax. And you start wow. to think that 
this Game War team might be starting to become unstoppable in this game as they're slowly mounting towards with crushing momentum. Vitality B have been a team that if they can get to the mid game, just roll over teams. Well, they got to that point this time round, but Game Ward had their number, had the read, and were making these plays better, securing advantages for themselves and putting their own statement on the map. 20 minutes into this game now, the gold lead, roughly 4,500 gold. Game Ward with 10 to 1 kill score. Dragons, 3 to nothing. The only thing really keeping Game Ward from just completely steamrolling this are those couple of turrets that they lost in the top side. That looming threat that Sagenda and Diplex will start to pump out insane amounts of damage. We've got Diplex working towards what could either be Shadow Flame or that Rabadon's Death Cap for the big Vagar spike. Two items completed for Sagenda and with a more of Armortius, you expect to see that Death Dance come through as well. It is a beautiful duo to prevent death question is whether or not they can get there and if that's enough to get them the win. Completely rude, dude. We're, we're kind of marching down towards that time now, that soul. And we're going around 2 minutes and 40. See Baron on the table now. Top turret should be forfeit here. Uh, I mean, there's not too much that Jacko should be fearful of. Has that spirit rush as well. But they're looking for the Baron. Remember, Callista is a champion that can do Baron very quickly when you are game ward here, so long as you sync up when you're going to go for the timing uh, of the Rend plus Smite combo, you should be okay. And it is also worth noting that Callista can no longer secure objectives from, the, you know, 1200 HP, for example. But it is something to, you know, to, to attribute to a game ward very quick Baron. You've got this on-hit style with the Rage Blade being completed. You are just going to chew through the big neutral objective and chew through single targets as well. If Inax gets any free time with a carry, with really anybody on Vitality B, since there are any particularly carries around, he's going to cut through them. Jack Troll on this support income really doesn't have too much agency at staying in that front line for a long time. Yes, he's got his Aftershock plus Face or Haymaker combo, but that's not going to do you too much when Inax is five levels up over you with these two completed items. Yeah, he's going to get absolutely melt, I think, in response. You can see by contrast. Camilius having that lock it is going to be doing absolute dividends for his team, providing all of those resistances. For the team that doesn't have much resistance shreds, obviously Vega are going to get to a point where that resistance shred doesn't massively matter. He's going to get the void stuff anyway, but providing so much for his team in contrast to the set, it's going to be really difficult for Vitality B. They kind of have to find these very massive sleeps from Skeens or a potential one shot. Two of them starting up the Baron here. He has ultimate and TP in response. Not quite alert. Sentinel's going out huge, and there's just no vision of this. There we go. One blue ward spots them out. Game ward immediately back away. They've burned now both of the blue wards of the carry, so Jeskla and Diplex don't have either one of them. They look to catch Jeskla here in the mid lane. Not going to be the case. There's a Drake spawning in 45 seconds, and reminder that Vitality B have to answer this. They have to take the Drake itself. Where game ward, they're not pressured to. They can just look for a Baron trade and maybe just take it for itself. Yeah, Game Ward in that kind of luxurious position that we talk about so much, being in that three dragon cushion whereby they can make the trade down here. See, Shigenda. Catch no, vision, no blue water left. They're not responding to it though. They're going to try and just get this dragon here. As you see, in the bot lane here, Shigenda and Malonic have met each other. If I engage here, Chekalaz towing the line here between the mid lane and the Baron. Dragon is going to be spawning around 10 seconds or so, but this is Game Ward's Baron. They might just turn straight towards the top side to try and break this game in further. Yeah, they, they're going to forfeit the dragon, right? We knew this was going to be the case. They're quite happy to just say, okay, well, you can have one measly ocean dragon. It's not your soul. Uh, and they've set up quite nicely now. That top tier two should be falling. You can see that's where Game Ward's attention is focused. Concern is that they are a little bit down in terms of spent gold. If we're looking at that, Vitality V will have been back to base and spent the majority of their gold that they're defending with. But I think the overall gold in Axe is probably still further ahead with all the spent gold versus what he's been able to pick up. Those item disparities certainly starting to ring true. You can see Camille is just shadowing here. You've also got Akabane nearby, making sure that everything's all good. Tip one turret for tier two, but there's that objective bounty on top of it. So overall, not the worst tra trade in existence, but game ward still with that Baron for a long time, likely gonna get a lot more. Inax has done quite a strange thing this game in terms of like the Callista, whereby I think it's something we touched on as well with Smiley's Callista. I don't think it's necessarily an intentional thing that they've done, but what ends up happening is the generation of a lead isn't exactly coming from the laning phase, it's coming from outside of the laning phase. 
which makes us as casters kind of our brains go boom, where we're like, oh my god, it's Callistaline. Why are they not getting advantage? But they always seem to find a way to surmount the odds. And although Jeskla and Jackshaw were able to kind of uh, go toe to toe with them, they've fallen quite behind, at least in the gold department, still keeping up in CS. Yeah. But Inax now a point five and oh, three items at 25 minutes in response to just the two items from Ezreal. Ezreal will get to a curve at a certain point, but for now, with the Baron as well, Inax is going to be able to do so much more in this team. And has an extra cleanse as well. Fully completed Mercurial Scimitar. On top of having cleanse available, trying to catch this guy is not going to be easy. Gets a little bit of extra movement speed juice from the Mercs in being picked up. Uh, a fairly defensive third item as far as they go. Not the biggest hemming in on snowballs, but I think that the easiest way for Inward to lose this game is if Inax dies. Um, I think that this is a very good preventative measure to stop that from happening. Dying, that's the right. one, the two mid lane throw. It does go down. Skeens flashes forward. But all he finds is Akabane. That's not the target you want. Yours coming down. It's a lucky charm onto Skeens, though. They looked like it was going to go the other way onto Jack Troll. But they find him here. Malonix coming up huge here on the side here. Akabane tries to find a reset. He gets it. The Vagar Cage comes down. Diplex tries to find some turn damage there. But it's going to be Inax who takes out Jesplay. It's a massive fight. Wow. Four game ward here. Akabane. Over with GP's corpse here with the Baron here and a few more seconds on it, they're going to get at least two inhibitors. They might even march onto the base here. It's four kills. They... Diplex can't do a lot. Uh, yeah, you don't have the wave player up against the Baron buff. Certainly not all the way back to those double cannon minions. They could go for the end. Really being used. That's going to be the one going to be generating a lot of space for you here. Diplex does have flash. Check the land. Look at his charm here. He almost gets taken out here. He goes into stasis. Check the might have taken a step too forward here. It's a massive cage! from Diplex, and they've paged the chances of Game Ward. It's to close out this game here. Step two forward from Jekyll, lad, a bit too eager in the end there. Nax, look at him now here. One more red buff tick will do it. He's got a lot of space to buy here. Jack Troll, he has Akabani and Co here. Inax is going massive. Inax is going big. He gets a double kill. What else can he find? Red buff slow. Jessica has to E now. Can he find anything more? No, he can't quite. He turns around the back end of this fight. And is in the back here as well. We'll Akabani's low. Inax has found Ezreal. What more can he get on the other side? Akabani's going low. One more Q will do it. Ulma does it. Inax is in the base now, though. Here he comes. Still has rage blade. Jack Lethal tempo stack. There's a lot of things stacking up here. Picks out the barrel here. Inax, what can you find for us? Dodges out from the barrel here. He's going to walk away back to the base, though. Shield bow pops. Props. He uses wards. He's got five hops here with these wards in the brush. Space bought and game ward. They stayed off disaster, really. Uh, they they lost out on three members at the back end and, you know, almost gave over. Well, they did give over an absolute ton of gold. Fortunately, they didn't lose Inax. Inax with some incredible uh, incredible mechanical play. Keeps himself alive. Dances around Vitality B, around the Nexus, around the base as well. And just, like I say, staves off what would have been a very detrimental set of plays for them. They're still very far ahead, even with those kills going over and even with those shutdowns being given back to Vitality B. It's a lot of gold back in the near close to touching distance. Soul for Game Ward. And with the durability patch, obviously all the extra HP, this Ocean Soul is certainly going to be working but with the amount of sustain that Inax has in tandem. Guardian Angel now picks up as that fourth item. Going to be so difficult to try and take down. And if they go and stretch just a little too far forward, Vitality B, they have the open inhibitor in the mid lane that's already been taken down. They've got a, you know, very weakened bot lane tier 3 turret and a very weakened Nexus turret as well. Ending the game for game ward won't be hard if there's little resistance. Completely. Touched on. Right, they were able to throw the line there. Didn't end up going into the disaster. It looked very bad when Diflex found that cage. It looked like a wipe that they could maybe transition into some of that bot side vision. But no, they managed to turn it around. Inax, very fancy movement there. means that they get the soul. And you spoke about before, Rude, dude. I want to harken back to something that you said earlier about how how this Ocean Soul would play out in terms of a lot of it hinges on Vitality B's ability to one-shot. Are they at a point where they can do that? Has the curve been achieved for champions like the Vagar, like the Gangplank? Vagar, Vagar, yes. I think that when Void Staff comes through, that will really start to speak through. But this build from this agenda isn't crit focused, right? We've got 20% crit chance, essentially. This is just going to be consistent GP damage, as opposed to those, you know, hardcore one-shot styles that we may expect to come across. I think that it's going to be difficult, this agenda, to, to play, to try and combat up against this Ocean Soul. For the rest of, oh, and for, but for Diplex really exclusively, he's the one who there's a lot of onus on to try and get that quick initial burst out onto. 
completely. Mariners are available now. That will do very good to add to Game Ward's trophy ah. tally that they have thus far. Get this mid fire rather easily. I mean, yeah, just look, look at the damage that Melonic received right there. Uh, pretty much negligible, right? Negligible, that was a barrel yeah. from Sagenda and a parlay. Baron up now so and Inax quickly. Game Ward. They've got complete control over this. Look at Jack Cross flank control. here. Well, he's off to the side here. He's gone around. Arm is found. On two. But it is going to be the case that that's Jeskler getting stunned up almost immediately. He's alive for now. Checkerlad finds it. He has another reset now. Going to go over the wall potentially into Diflex. Jack Troll's flank goes remiss because of that getting caught out there. It's going to mean two kills. Checkerlad and Co. Going to take two kills here. Going to take the Baron as well. And this is the beginning of the end for Vitality B. You have to feel. Yeah, Baron merely a formality at this case. They can't step forward even to, to stop this tier one or get the tier one turret in response. With this Baron, you expect it to be at least three inhibitors, most likely the game. Game Ward have honestly slowly, meticulously controlled it up until this point, and now they just get the reward of being able to step up and take the Baron for free. Ten kills on Inax. This hasn't been the game that... Oh, it hasn't been the the necessarily early game that we expected from Callista, but what we what we do uh, obviously want to mention is that in act as an early game Callista, you still skirmish incredibly well, and that has been proven to be the case here. Their team fighting has been exceptional. And the mid lane inhibitor just coming up in time for it to get knocked on back down. Got Melonic in the mid lane making moves. Top side, it's the rest of game war taking all the turrets. He's on to Jack Troll here. Jack Troll. He's gonna be getting on that rather gratuitously here. He tries to find the ultimate, but he's gone too low with the W being used. Shekalad goes forward, doesn't find the charm, but this is Jack Troll being taken out. One of your primary engages. It's about whether or not they can stave off the waves that are coming in. You see Gangplay Armor being used to take that out here. Here comes Shekalad, primes its side. He lands oh. onto Jeskler. It's massive from Shekalad. He finds another one. It's a weird angle, but weird angles have been the key of the game here. Game Ward, he goes in again, tries to find it. If that went down there. Melonic that flashes forward, they find it onto Shikenda, Hex brings the drop. He's in the back line trying to find a sleep, but he's going to get taken out as well. Nexus is going to be taken out in a few seconds or so. Vitality B, your reigning titan. Shikenda was your carry top. Game would respond back with a definitive victory. And when LDLC step up and take their game, Vitality B have to respond, but they cannot do it. Game Ward now match four and one and say that we are a part of the 